Hello and thank you for watching 2carpros.com. In this video we are going to show you how to replace a clutch, flywheel, pilot bearing, rear main seal, and throwout bearing. The vehicle we will be showing you on is a 2005-2014 Ford Mustang. Let's start with using the appropriate size wrench, disconnecting the negative side of the battery. Our next step is to disconnect the rear section of exhaust from the front. WD-40 can help you when removing the exhaust bolts. Using the appropriate size socket, remove the exhaust bolts allowing you to disconnect the rear section of exhaust. Also disconnecting any hangers for the rear part of the mufflers, or where the exhaust tips are. Remove the rear section of exhaust from the middle section. Using the appropriate size socket, remove the hardware holding the drive shaft to the rear differential. Using the appropriate size 12 point Torx, remove the hardware allowing you to remove the front of the drive shaft from the back of the transmission. Using a hammer, hit the U joints on the drive shaft, allowing you to shock the drive shaft removing it from the transmission. Our next step is to remove the hardware allowing us to remove the middle section of the drive shaft. Removing the drive shaft from the vehicle At this time, it is a good idea to check the U-joints on the drive shaft to see if they are worn needing to be replaced. And also do it for the CV joint side that goes to the rear differential. Our next step is to disconnect the O2 sensors mounted on the transmission. Using a transmission jack, support the transmission, allowing us to remove the transmission mount from the body. Using the appropriate size socket, loosen and remove the hardware, allowing you to remove the transmission mount. Lowering the transmission jack and using a large pry bar can help you when removing the transmission mount. At this time, it is a good idea to use a small piece of wood to wedge in between the frame and the oil pan to support the motor when removing the transmission. Using the appropriate size socket, remove the hardware allowing you to remove any heat shielding, gaining access to remove the exhaust manifolds. Using the appropriate size wrench, loosen and remove the primary O2 sensors in front of the catalytic converter. 
Our next step, using the appropriate size socket, remove the two hardware allowing you to remove the exhaust from the header. Doing this for both sides. After removing the exhaust, it is time to disconnect the transmission shifting linkage using the appropriate size socket and remove the hardware allowing you to disconnect the shifting linkage. Our next step is to disconnect the sensors to the transmission. This particular one is called a vehicle speed sensor or the VSS. After removing all the sensors from the transmission, it is time to remove the starter. Start with removing this plastic shielding, allowing you to remove the two nuts, allowing you to remove the positive and the trigger wire to the starter. Using the appropriate size socket, remove the two nuts, allowing you to remove the positive and trigger wire, like said before. Our next step is to use the appropriate size socket allowing you to remove the three hardware bolts to the starter, removing the starter from the transmission bell housing. Using air tools with the right attachment and extensions can help you when removing these three hardware bolts. After removing the last hardware bolt, the starter will become loose. Remove it from the transmission's bell housing. After removing the starter, our next step is to remove the hydraulic clutch line, located near the top of the driver's side of the transmission. Using a pick tool can help you when removing the small clip to the hydraulic line. When removing the clutch's hydraulic line, fluid will leak out. We like to use a vacuum cap to plug the line while finishing the repair. Our next step is to use the appropriate size socket. Removing the hardware, allowing us to remove the transmission bell housing from the engine block. We are going to leave this bolt threaded in. We will explain why later on in this video. Using the right attachments and extensions can help you when removing the upper hardware holding the transmission housing. Also using a large breaker bar can help you when loosening the hardware bolts. Using a flashlight, go over your repair, making sure there is nothing connected, preventing you from removing the transmission from the vehicle. 
using the transmission jack, securely fasten the transmission to the mounting plate of the transmission jack. Then remove the last hardware bolt from the transmission bell housing. We like to use a large pry bar to lightly apply pressure allowing you to slide the transmission away from the engine. In this next clip, this is the removal of the transmission from the engine. Our next step, using the appropriate size socket, remove the hardware allowing you to remove the clutch from the flywheel. Using the appropriate size socket, remove the hardware allowing you to remove the flywheel from the crankshaft. We like to use a large pry bar to apply pressure allowing you to remove the flywheel. Here's what the rear main seal looks like in your Ford Mustang. We'll be replacing this later on in the video. You can see here on our flywheel that it is heat damaged, needing to be resurfaced and machined. We are going to send that out and show you what the finished product is later on in this video. We do this process so the new clutch will have a fresh surface to mate to. You can inspect the wear of your clutch by the rivets indicated here. Our clutch's rivets are fully through the clutch disc, needing to be replaced. We like to compare our new clutch with our old clutch to be sure a proper install. It is very important to install the clutch assembly correctly, making sure the clutch's thick side that holds the springs goes to the pressure plate, and the flat side of the clutch will be facing the flywheel. Doing this step incorrectly will cause the pressure plate and the clutch to not sit flat up against the flywheel. This is the throwout bearing and input shaft for the transmission we are going to replace the throwout bearing. To remove the throwout bearing, we will need to remove the small clip from the transmission's bell housing, allowing us to remove the line. Using the appropriate size socket, remove the hardware allowing you to remove the throwout bearing from the transmission's bell housing. Then remove the old throwout bearing from the transmission's bell housing. We like to compare our new throwout bearing with our old throwout bearing to be sure a proper install. <laughs> 
Install the new throwout bearing to the transmission's bell housing using the two hardware bolts you removed before and using the appropriate size socket, torquing it to factory specifications. Reinstall the small clip that holds the throwout bearing's hydraulic line to the transmission's bell housing. Using breaker carb cleaner and an old shop towel, clean the input shaft where the pilot bearing and the clutch will be touching. After the cleaner is done drying, we like to use a small amount of axle bearing grease on the input shaft for the clutch and the pilot bearing. Then, we like to test fit the new clutch to the transmission's input shaft to be sure a proper install. Using a large standard screwdriver, pry the metal flywheel shielding from the back of the engine block, gaining access to the rear main seal assembly. Using the appropriate size sockets, remove the hardware allowing you to remove the rear main seal assembly. Using a standard screwdriver, pry the rear main seal assembly off the engine block and crank. After removing the old seal from the assembly, using a gasket scraper, clean the surface where the assembly touches the block. Using breaker carb cleaner, clean that same surface along with where the new rear main seal will be placed. Using a fine grit sandpaper and placing old chap towels to catch the debris, sand the end of the crankshaft where the new seal will be touching. We do this process to the end of the crankshaft to ensure the new seal has a fresh surface to mate to. Then remove the old chop towels and wipe down the end of the crankshaft. We like to compare our new rear main seal to our old rear main seal to be sure a proper install. Our next step is to install the new seal to the assembly. It is very important to install the new seal the correct way. The rear main seal has a lip. This lip needs to go inwards. When the oil is pressing up against the seal, causing the seal to get tighter around the crankshaft. If you install the new seal backwards, the slip here will allow the oil to get out. When installing the new seal to the assembly, we like to use a flat piece of steel and a small hammer to apply pressure evenly, making sure the seal is flat up against the mounting assembly. We like to use silicone rubber to help seal the rear main seal assembly. Running a small bead along the diameter, but on the inside of the hardware bolt holes and also along the bottom side. Using breaker carb cleaner and an old shop towel, Wipe away the surface on the engine block where the rear main seal assembly will be touching. We like to use a thin bead of silicone rubber between the oil pan and the assembly. 
Our next step is to gently install the rear main seal, then install and tighten the hardware bolts in a cross pattern formation, evenly using the appropriate size socket. Using a small hammer to help install and settle the rear main seal assembly by lightly tapping the housing. Then install the retainer shield using a small punch and hammer in a circular motion. Lightly hit the punch pushing the retainer shield flat up against the rear main seal. This is what our flywheel looks like after getting it machined or resurfaced. Using breaker carb cleaner and an old chop towel, clean the surface where the new clutch will be mating to before installing it back to the crankshaft. Install the flywheel to the crankshaft using the hardware you removed from before, tightening them in a cross pattern formation and torquing them to factory specifications. Using a pilot bearing puller, remove the old pilot bearing from the end of the crankshaft. We like to compare our new pilot bearing with our old pilot bearing to be sure a proper install. When installing the new pilot bearing, we like to use the appropriate size socket for the diameter of the pilot bearing while using a small hammer. Hit it into the end of the crankshaft. Our next step is to reinstall the metal flywheel shielding. Then, making sure the clutch disc is in the pressure plate the correct way, install the clutch and pressure plate, lining up the pilot bearing using the key the clutch kit gave you. Then, using the hardware you removed from before, using the appropriate size socket, tighten in a cross pattern formation to factory specifications.
Once you are done torquing the hardware bolts to factory specs, remove the clutch disc alignment tool. Our next step is to reinstall the transmission to the back of the engine block, but before we do, we like to double check that there is no wires or lines blocking our installation. Using a transmission jack with the transmission securely chained to the jack, raise the trans and reinstall it lining up the transmission's input shaft to the crankshaft's pilot bearing. When installing the transmission, it is important to keep the trans straight with the engine. This is judged by the gap being parallel between the motor and trans when installing the transmission. Taking another look to make sure the transmission was installed correctly, the gap is left with the flywheel hidden as the transmission has engaged into the clutch splines and the pilot shaft is in the pilot bearing properly. Now with the transmission still being supported, rotate it to align the hardware holes. Then using the hardware you removed from before, thread in by hand, then using the appropriate size socket with the right extensions, tighten in a cross pattern formation torquing them to factory specifications. The hard bolts to install are the two top ones on the transmission's bell housing. An old automotive trick is to use a small piece of paper to hold the hardware bolts in the socket when installing them. Our next step is to remove the small vacuum cap to our hydraulic line and install it back to the throughout bearing line coming out of the transmission's bell housing. Now it is time to reinstall the starter using the three mounting hardware bolts you removed from before and the appropriate size socket. Reinstall the power cable to the correct terminal along with the trigger wire, using the hardware you removed from before, tightening them with the appropriate size socket or wrench. Reinstall the wire cover to the starter's terminals. Also, reinstall and tighten any hardware for the flywheel's metal shielding. <laughs> 
Reinstall any subframe you had to remove for the repair. Using the hardware you removed from before, tightening them with the appropriate size socket. Our next step is to reinstall the car's wiring harness to the appropriate sensors on the transmission. If the car is older, the wiring harness mounting clips might not work anymore. We like to use zip ties to fix this problem. Our next step is to reinstall the shifting linkage. Using the hardware you removed from before, tightening them using the appropriate size socket or wrench. Next, it is a good idea to inspect the transmission's mount to see if it is worn needing to be replaced before installing it back onto the car. Install the mount back onto the vehicle using the hardware you removed from before, tightening them with the appropriate size socket. Lower the transmission jack and install the last hardware for the mounting of the transmission. Reinstall any heat shielding for the exhaust back onto the vehicle. Then reinstall the center section of exhaust back onto the headers using the hardware you removed from before. Then tighten them using the appropriate size socket. Reinstall any O2 sensors that you had to remove from the exhaust using the appropriate size wrench. Then connect the factory wiring harness to the appropriate O2 sensors. Our next step is to reinstall the drive shaft. We like to start with mounting it to the transmission flange using the hardware you removed from before, then tighten them using the appropriate size 12 point Torx, torquing them to factory specifications. We like to mount the center section of the drive shaft before torquing down the 12 point Torx bolts. Next, mount the center section of drive shaft using the appropriate size socket for the two mounting bolts, then torque the 12 point Torx bolts to factory specifications in a cross pattern formation. Our last step with the drive shaft is to mount the rear section to the differential. Using the hardware you removed from before, then tighten them with the appropriate size socket in a cross pattern formation. <laughs> 
Next, connect the rear section of exhaust with the middle section while replacing and tightening the mounting hardware for the exhaust system. After reconnecting and mounting the exhaust system, go over your repair making sure everything is reconnected properly with nothing touching the exhaust system. Next reconnect the negative wire to the battery. It is a good idea to lightly tap the terminal with the wire to see if there is any major sparks or loud noises happening when reconnecting the battery indicating something is wrong. Using the appropriate size wrench, tighten the clasp for the negative battery cable. Next, you will need to press down and release the clutch pedal, repeating this process until you find what is called clutch pedal pressure. It is at this time to check the clutch fluid level. If it is low, add if needed. Please click our subscribe button and like us on Facebook. Thank you for watching 2carpros.com.